These seven points are what's going to separate you from the rest of society. How you can get success in any endeavor of your life. The first point is, how do you frame failure? Is failure something that you look at and just go and fall to pieces with when you do fail? And what exactly do I mean by failure? If we use the gym as an analogy for failure, it's the strangest thing because what we're actively doing is we're actively looking for the, the parts that we're going to fail at. And actually life is no different to that. Let me explain. When we're looking for something in life and we're trying to develop, we're trying to develop a skill set, what we're actually doing is failing time and time again. So take it as public speaking. The first time you do it, you're going to suck. The second time you're going to suck. The third time you will as well. But what lessons are you taking from that? And how are you changing your approach as you go into the next experience? And the gym is the same. The gym will teach you everything you need to know about life. Once you fail in an exercise, why did you fail? Was it your form? Was it the tempo? Was it the depth of the rep? Was it the fact that you weren't fueled? All of these things we can take and put these lessons into life. So how do you see failure? Is it a failure or is it a lesson that you can be learning? The second point is, what is the story that you're telling yourself? And this is probably the biggest barrier that I see as a coach. Oftentimes, we just have this story that we're telling ourselves about life, about how things should be, about the way that we should be. And it's not really until we sit down and challenge those viewpoints that we actually realize that there's an opportunity to mold who we want to be, how we want to be, and the life that we want to live. So. If we use myself as an example, for the longest time, I was so insecure. I was not confident. I didn't want to talk in front of the camera. I didn't want my photos being taken. And that's just the story I was telling myself that I wasn't good enough. I wasn't going to look good and it wasn't for me. But as soon as I started to step outside of that comfort zone and develop the skills that were needed to actually feel confident in doing that, my perspective changed. And it continues to change every single time I step out of that comfort zone. You can do the same. Take a small step, a small challenge, and prove to yourself that you can do it. Each time you do that, you'll be able to take bigger challenges, bigger risks, and you'll take home bigger rewards in terms of your own development, in terms of your own confidence, and who you become as an individual. Another point is how you talk to yourself. I did a podcast with Amy Minnie not too long ago, and she reaffirmed one crucial point. If we spoke to our friends like we spoke to ourselves, we wouldn't have any. Now think about that for a second. Reflect on the situations. Do you treat yourself as an enemy when you get something wrong, when things don't go to plan? Is your self-talk saying, you idiot? Of course, you failed. You should have done better. Would you speak to your friends like that? And you wouldn't. You know you wouldn't. And that's the thing. What we've got to do is we've got to look at how we're cultivating our own environment within our own heads. So if we can provide ourselves with the support that we would give our friends, it's going to help you grow. It's going to help you succeed. One of the biggest points is stepping outside of your comfort zone. I cannot stress how important this is. Without doing so, you cannot grow. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be tough. It's going to be stressful. But that's where all of the lessons lie. That's where all of the growth is. If you only stay within this small circle that you've been born into and you're networking in with that friendship circle, there's going to be very little growth. You have to take active steps to get uncomfortable, find things that you're not comfortable doing and actively pursue them. And this comes back to how we talk to ourselves. If you're treating yourself like an enemy here, if you're treating yourself like you're not good enough, it's going to be very hard to do that. So these are all very simple tips, but they're not easy. Another big mistake is people rely so much on motivation. They think they need to feel good to do something, especially things that are good for them. They think they should feel good all the time. You know, I, I want to go to the gym. I want to do this. 
I want to eat well. And that's just not the way that it is. You know, I've been training now for the best part of 12 years. And I can tell you one thing, I'm not always motivated. And it's something that people ask me all the time. Dan, how do you stay motivated? The reality is I'm not. I'm really not. I have bad days like everyone. But the real truth is dedication. Now, dedication is the secret sauce in getting results because you're no longer relying on feeling good to do the activities that you know that you should in order for your own benefit. It's doing the things that your future self is going to thank you for, even if you're not motivated in that moment, if you're not feeling great. It's doing those things. It's the biggest act of self-love you can possibly give yourself. So being disciplined, and lots of people ask me, how do you build that? How do you cultivate that? And the unfortunate reality is, it's just something that you do. And I know that's a terrible piece of advice, but start small. Get a goal that is not too difficult and not too easy. Get something that challenges you, but not to the point that it's ridiculously impossible for you to achieve. And just commit yourself to doing it. Okay, start very, very small and focus on just doing it, no matter how you feel. And as you get better at that, the skill of being more disciplined becomes easier and it just becomes part of who you are. Once you've said something that you're going to commit to doing it, you just do it. And let me ask you this, what's the alternative? The last one is the most important. Do the work. And not in the sense of grind it out, Learn what you're doing, develop your craft, develop your knowledge, keep asking questions, always stay hungry and just consistently do the work. It's gonna be hard. If it was easy, everybody would have the goal that you have and they would have achieved it. And the reality is you probably only want to achieve what you want to achieve because it's difficult and because it's challenging and not many other people have it. So that is the seven tips that are gonna guarantee you success. So if you like this video, subscribe for more, give it a like, and I'll see you in the next one.